Did you ever have any plans of doing politics or sports or was always sports? Um, I actually wanted to do politics. Um, I certainly wouldn't uh, uh, say I was an aficionado at it, but what I want, I've always prided myself in being a master communicator that had a decent understanding of current events and current, poli uh, and current political events. And more importantly, I was incredibly confident, and maybe it's to a fault, I'll openly admit, but I am incredibly confident when I'm on camera. I really believe. Always? That, yeah. Always. I, re I, really, I really believe everyone's in my way. Literally. I, I mean, if, if for, for in, in simpler layman's terms, I walked around and I've always believed like I'm the Michael Jordan of this industry. When I'm on the air, I'm the one that will make you want to hear from me. I don't care who I'm on the air with. I don't care who it is. It does not matter to me. By the time I finish speaking, I am the one that you're going to want to listen to. That's my attitude. I'm not saying it's factual. I don't know. I mean, we are number one, but I don't know. But that's always been my attitude because to me, presentation matters. How you speak, how you look when you're speaking, you know, your cadence, your diction, everything that flows with it. I believe I have the package. And when I'm in front of the camera, I'm not nervous. I don't feel like I'm talking to millions of people. I feel like they're listening to me. It's my domain. Big welcome to Welcome yeah. to my domain. This is what I dominate. What is your flow or structure of processing issues? I'm curious because, you know, the whole thing with first take is do you, something happens, Antonio Brown happens, you know, Kobe, Shaq issue, whatever thing that takes place, mm -hmm. do you go and see what other people are saying and then first take, here's what my thoughts are? Sometimes. By, by, oh, you do? do Not, sometimes. Sometimes. It, it depends on when I'm coming on the air. They're like, there are sometimes, like, yeah. for example, when I was on the news sports center today, I didn't get to see anybody because I was doing first take. And then literally two minutes before the sports center hit, they got in my ear and said, mm -hmm. stay right there. Sports center needs you to do the new sports center. And that happens a lot with me in my career. Like ESPN will pick up the phone. Steven, we need you. You know, we need you on the air in an hour. <laughs> you know, we need you here now. You know, so that happens an awful lot. First take is first take. So I don't have time really to watch other folks in the morning. Uh, it's, it's rare that I get it. It's not always. Sometimes I get to, but... 90% of the time, I don't get to see anybody. So it's first take and I gotta be ready. You do your research. And what you do is you do your research and you understand what your job description is. If I'm a newspaper reporter, I'm reporting. If I'm a columnist, I'm looking for an angle that I want to address and I want to attack from an editorial perspective. On first take, it's the combination of it all. I'm editorializing, I'm opining, I'm informing, I'm entertaining, I'm doing all of these different things. That's, I'm just talking about my own individual approach. And so for me, when I gather, when I know the subject matter we're addressing, first thing I do is acquire as much information as I possibly can. Step, the, step one. Step one. I do nothing before I acquire the information. What sources you go to? Is it just stats, I data? Read, I, read, I, I read everything. I read the news articles, you know, the New York Daily News, the Washington Post, the LA Times, ESPN.com, Yahoo Sports, all of them. I read everything I get my hands on. If it's a particular athlete, one of the first things I do is go to a local publication because those are the people covering them every Interesting. day. Interesting. Got Why? it. Why? Because I know that as a newspaper guy, no one knew about the Sixers more than me from the national level. Locally, you might have known as much, but from a national Absolutely. level, you're not there with them every day. It's a disrespect to the reporters that are on the scene to think that you know what they don't. Chances are they know more than you because they care about more of the intricate details that you care. You care when a big story comes along. You care if they trade a star or, you know, somebody gets in trouble or whatever. You ain't following the dude that signed a 10-day contract. You're not signing a dude to sign a one-year deal for the minimum salary. You're not paying attention to those things like that because it's not important on a national scale. But the local guys are. And so for me, anytime there's a story that's percolating, one of the first things I do is go to the local sites because the local newspapers, the local radio folks and stuff like that will give you more insight because they're around those folks every day. So that's part of the news gathering. Then what you do is go about the business of formulating your opinion. Then after that, if you have the time, you want to hear 
the opinions of other people to make sure there's something that you didn't miss. But once those bright lights come on, your voice has to be your own. Because to you, to me, sounding like somebody else, trying to duplicate or imitate sure. somebody else is a form of plagiarism. Directly, indirectly, you know, tacit or otherwise. It's a form of plagiarism. Be uniquely you. Thank <music> you.